I believe it's spirits. Their energy is just locked in this location, the energy of children being in this home. The rejection that some of these children felt, that energy, that emotion could be trapped within the walls. Hello? Whoa. The first group I had in here, um, they were downstairs and two of the gentlemen got bit. We heard that there is an entity here who likes to bite people and scratch people. Are you here? What was this? Same voice. That sounds like an old woman, man. I have cold chills so bad. You liar. I'm not lying. Can you knock that over? Can you do it one more time for us, just like I showed you? Did you hear that? I mean, you had deaths here. I want to know what's haunting here. Ooh, that was a child's voice. That was weird. Dave is going to open himself up to you. Not joking, my head is moving in the mirror. You know, you could feel, you know, what they left behind. You know, just the energy of children being in this home. I just know there's something here. And as soon as you walk in, man, my hair on my arm stands right up. And it's just that energy. It's like that heavy energy is in there. All right, Dave, we are officially inside the Beale Mansion. And this place is absolutely beautiful. It is. This is uh, unlike any place that we've been for a very long time. And... The house is massive. Back then they, they took pride in what they built. You know, it was, you know, you earned your money and you wanted to build something beautiful and this is what you got. Back in 1898, um, a gentleman from Toledo, Ohio came here. Uh, his name was Jerome Beal. He wanted to start a business. So he opened up a jewelry shop and he opened up a piano business right downtown Fremont, Ohio. Um, he built the home. He did not pass away here, though. He sold the home to the Wolf family back in 1920. The Wolf family moved in, and tragedy started um, hitting the family, like bad luck and stuff. Um, Clarence Wolf, the husband, was walking across the street here and got hit by a car. He did survive, but he had a lot of injuries. So over the years, he, was, he had bad health, you know, started decaying. So he did pass away in the house. In uh, 1966, Daisy Wolf, the wife, she started getting sick and she did pass away in the house and I believe it's in the room back here because you could tell they had a switch for a calling and it was a bedroom back there. So the house sat empty for a few years and the Toledo Children's Foundation wanted to purchase a place for the mentally handicapped children, sick children and unwanted children. And they purchased this home and it was a, it was a group home for children for 25 years. And that is what people pick up on here. The energy of children, the sounds of children. And there's even rumors that children had died inside this house. Uh, a historian did tell me that uh, he thinks a boy either committed suicide or he had an accidental death that happened in the house. Interestingly enough, too, he brought in an antique wheelchair that was not from this facility, but sitting right down here is a potty chair, a children's potty chair that would have been used when the facility was open. And, you know, he talked about all the things that he found inside this house. Did you hear that? I did hear that. Was that a voice? Yeah, it sounded like a little kid. Yeah. He talked about all the things that he found inside this house. He talked about all the things that he found inside this house. Did you hear that? And if you have some of these relics still left over here from when the place was open, much like Steve's museum, you put all of those things into one place. And if they were attached to that, you know, their energy still may be here in this house attached to that still yet. I remember we were sitting in the one room and I, I asked for a knock. So I knocked on the floor and it sat quiet forever. And I swear to God that someone shot a gun off in here. Went, <laughs> Man, I jumped out of my chair. I was like freaking out, you know, and I'm looking around. What the hell was that? The next day I came in here and I was standing in the dining room and 
I heard somebody walk around upstairs. So I called my girlfriend, I'm like, somebody's in this house. And she's like, well, go up there and look. So I go up there and there's nobody up there, but I could hear footsteps just walking around like, like they're just doing their thing. And I was thinking, you know, being a paranormal investigator, I'm like, man, is this place haunted? As soon as you walk into the house, I mean, any, I have owned this since July. And every time I walk in here, I get this weird feeling, but on that second floor, Man, it's a whole different ballpark, man. I mean, the hair on my arm stands up. It could be the children trying to get your attention. Like maybe they're surrounding you and you're just feeling that. It's really weird, but you, any kind of equipment you put up, they will go nuts. Here we go. I really want to know children's names you know, what happened, you know, were they abused here? Cause I've heard stories, some guy told me that this place wasn't very nice. Is it true or not? I don't know, but I want to find that out. And that's why I love the teams to come in and give me their perspective on what they find and what information they can get. It's kind of like that looming feeling throughout, like something is watching you around each turn that you take. And one of the things that might be contributing to that is in this room right behind you, they actually put in a scrying mirror area. I do have a scrying room set up. I don't know if you've ever done that before. Um, what you do is you stare in the mirror and I actually had a couple that have never done it before. And they're like, they tried it and the lady saw what looked like a mentally challenged child look at her through the mirror. Um, and the gentleman saw a lady with a like a bun on top of her head looking at him and they were freaked out. I mean, you think about the energies that this would unleash. People sitting here trying to tap in and use the mirrors to, to focus in on the energies or focus in on the spirits and the entities and allow themselves to be submerged into this house and what that may allow to come through as well. If we learned anything from our Davies House investigation, it is that the possibility of that actually being true of the communication through the mirrors. I mean, it's very possible, you know? Yeah. Did Monica turn mirrors into portals? Mirror. Mirror! Dude, no way. It said mirror, man. What? There's something in the mirror. Really? That is weird. That is weird. And from what we understand, all of these bedrooms, all of this space up here would have been used for the children to live in when this was a children's home. And they talk about the sounds of children, footsteps, movement, doors moving, paranormal activity that you would expect to see from children. And if any children are up here and can hear my voice, you're more than welcome to come out and play pranks on us. <laughs> if you wanna touch us, if you wanna push us, if you wanna move stuff, knock things over, you're more than welcome to do that. And in fact, if you would do it, we would appreciate it. We're here to play tonight. Um, I remember I looked at the house and I wanted to get photos because I wanted to get an idea of what it would cost me to fix this house, never even thinking it's haunted or anything. So I called a realtor and he let me in. I was up in the attic and I was taking pictures and I heard somebody coughing like, I mean, they were coughing up a lung and I'm thinking, man, my girlfriend don't smoke. And I don't think he does. I mean, he might, but I'm thinking, I never even thought anything of it. And I came down and I came out, they were outside on the porch. And I was like, who's coughing? Like, we weren't, nobody was coughing. But I heard coughing in the house. It was coming from the floor below. One up to the attic. Wow. Ugh. The key word when they talk about this children's home is its unwanted children. And you think about the sadness that would bring, the rejection that some of these children felt, even if they didn't die here, even if their spirit is not here, that energy, that emotion could be trapped within the walls. Or it could have also created something. You talk about poltergeist, a spirit or an entity that is created from strong emotion. There could be a whole lot of things that we run into tonight that may be different than just a normal spirit. 
there's so much, I, I believe a house could hold energy because of what happened here. I mean, you had deaths here. You had children that were having a good time. Somebody actually took care of them from what I, you know, what I would believe. And their energy is left behind. I mean, you could be, you don't have to die at a location to haunt it. You know, your energy could just stay behind and be at that location. The basement, um, so the first group I had in here, um, they were downstairs and two of the gentlemen got bit. I didn't believe them at first, but they showed me that they had bite marks. And I'm like, okay, that's kind of weird. And I'm thinking, demonic. And then um, I had a group in here a couple weeks later and I had them on a tour and the girl's like, ow, and she, she got scratched. And I'm thinking, oh man, this ain't gonna be good. <laughs> you know, I, I started thinking about the whole situation and I'm thinking, you know, I highly doubt it's demonic. And the reason I'm gonna tell you why is because children, they just want your attention. What's the first thing they do? They bite and they scratch and they pull hair. And that's what I'm believing that's down there. There's, there's, I call him the biter, but I believe it's a child that's trying to get somebody's attention. Definitely creepy down here. Yes, it is. And yes, I'm on high spider alert. <laughs> right here, this main room that we're standing in right now at the bottom of the stairs, they've had multiple reports of people being scratched, people being bitten, and just having physical contact. So who knows whether it is a darker entity or it is just a child trying to get someone's attention. It could be either. But either way, who knows what's gonna happen to us tonight when we come down here and do that, if that's something that is common. That is something that we've never really dealt with before is having you know, reported hauntings of somebody being bitten yeah in a location so that is, that's new to us and i'm very intrigued by that yeah, it'll be interesting to see if something like that happens tonight i believe it's spirits you know the energy their energy is just locked in this location and uh it, it's just more you know exciting because i want to learn about what's here and because it's my place you know when you go to other places i'm doing the same thing for them i'm trying to get them information of what's haunting i want to know what's haunting here but the sun is almost down and I think it's about time for us to set up our cameras, set up the equipment and try and find out what paranormal activity occurs inside the Beale Mansion when it is completely empty. So are you ready for our abandonment session tonight to get started with our investigation? I'm more than ready for the abandonment. And before we get started on the abandonment, quick plug real quick, we just dropped some new abandonment merch. So make sure that you head down to the description below Click on the merch link and go check out the new abandonment merch. Let's go. So we're getting ready to leave for abandonment and we were downstairs. We had set this stuff up first, but unfortunately didn't roll on this camera yet because we wanted to save the record space for once we were actually getting ready to leave. And we were standing on the first level, getting ready to come up here and turn all of this stuff on, and we thought we heard the REM pod going off. All right, go for it. That's a, yeah, that was it. Well, if you touched that, thank you. We're gonna leave this here for you to play with. We put a nice little doll there beside it. So you can play with that. I didn't even realize you were coming upstairs again. That scared me. Sorry. And you see how Dave did that. He made the box chime and beep. And so if you step in front of it, it'll do that for us while we're gone. You just stand in, at the top of the stairs or in this area here. All right, so it is time for our abandonment session here. We're gonna leave Beale Manor completely empty to see what happens while we are gone. We're going to be gone for about an hour. Now we have all four floors wired with cameras. We have one right here in the main entryway. This actually has the EDI plus meter, which measures different environmental changes as well as uh, checks for EMF and vibration as well. So if anything happens around this stairwell, it's going to pick up on it. Now up on the second floor, we have the REM pod, some cat balls, as well as one of the two motion sensors. The second motion sensor is up in the attic along with the mill meter. 
Now down in the basement, that's an area that's of particular interest to us because that is where people have frequently gotten bitten as well as scratched. So we have the paranormal music box down there as well as the ghost tube. The ghost tube is running to see if it says anything relevant while we are gone down there in that basement. So it may give us some insight on whether or not this is a darker entity or whether this is just a child trying to get someone's attention. So uh, let's go ahead and leave and see what happens while we're gone, Dave. You ready? I'm more than ready. Let's do it. Let's head out. Just real quick, I wanted to say to the spirits here in the Beale Mansion, Beale Manor, Beale House, whatever you want to call it, we left a bunch of devices around in all of the different rooms. Leave. And those are for you. We want you to try and interact with them and uh, see if you can figure out how to use them for us. Sin. We've been waiting a long, long time for someone to interact with them, so if you could do it, that would be very cool. <clears throat> Dead. Missing. This is a bizarre sequence of events. Just after seven minutes of us leaving, a soft and melodic tone can be heard that almost sounds like a woman singing or crying. And then, immediately after, a knock can be heard from the dining room. Which isn't weird in itself, but the EMF detector inside the EDI plus meter picks up on a quick spike of electromagnetic energy. And it's precisely in sync with the knock. We've been using the EDI plus meter for almost three years now, and we can count on one hand the number of times it's detected a spike in EMF, but it won't be the last time on this abandonment session. Demon. Children.
over here. Devil. So we're going to start by doing a session in the attic, but we also have an action cam set up on the second floor. So we're going to start in the attic and then work our way back down to the second floor. Maybe even try and sit in that chair and do a scrying session to see what happens. us. Closing the door. So you can see we have the paranormal music box set up here on the chair. If anything of a different temperature than the ambient air moves in front of it, it'll start playing the music. So shall we head on up? Let's do it. Remember, watch your head going up here. Yes. What? I just got a whiff of something foul. Like it's not like the normal musty smell of an old building. It was like, and I don't smell it anymore. It was like, it was like foul. It's really weird. If there's anyone up here. My name is Ryan and this is Dave back here behind me. We came here to speak to you so that you could tell your story. And hopefully, you'll feel comfortable enough to come out and speak to us. We brought devices and toys for you to use. They're all here for you to play with. This thing on the floor with the red light on it, it may look kind of strange, but it's just a fun light, it's just a fun light toy. If you touch it, it'll light up like this. Could somebody else try it? If there are any spirits here with us, my name is Dave, and this is Ryan right over here. And if you can, we'd like for you to try and communicate with us when we ask you questions. And you can respond using the radio that Ryan has. Or by touching one of these devices. Do you understand? I say I would leave. Are we bothering you? Or are we intruding in your space? Because if you want us to leave, we'll just you just have to ask us. We're not mean guys. We're not mean spirited. If you don't want us here, we'll go back downstairs. All you have to do is tell us. I can hear. Is this Mr. Wolf? Can you speak more clearly through this? Hello? Whoa. Hello? Is this Daisy? Hi. That was the same voice. That sounds like an old woman, man. I have cold chills so bad. Daisy, are we talking to you now? Daisy, can you push that thing over that's on the table there? Go ahead and do it then. We'll turn our backs to you. How about that? Bye -bye. 
We're gonna be, we're gonna end up going down to the second floor here if you don't want to talk to us up here. That was creepy. Yeah, it was. Sound like a breathy voice went. Help. Do you need help? Come on, it's not that hard. You just got to do this. Just like that. Can you do it for us? <laughs> strange. Strange. That's weird. Yeah, it is strange, isn't it? Thank you for actually doing it again for me. Can you do it one more time for us, just like I showed you? Or you can do use that one down there. It does the same thing. Wow. Thank you. Just like that. You got it. Can you grab a hold of it now? It's a fun toy, isn't it? If you would rather us not be up here, can you try and touch that one more time and we'll leave you alone? For anyone that's down here that didn't hear us when we were in the attic, my name is Ryan and this is Dave and we really would just love to speak to you. Can you make a loud sound in whichever room was yours? Hmm. So far very quiet. Yeah, it is. No better time than the present to give the old scrying a try. Yeah. Mm. Scrying has been used in spiritualism and fortune telling for centuries. By peering in a reflective surface and clearing your mind, it's said you can begin to see things Years ago, an old tradition of scrying led young women to gaze into a mirror in a darkened room to see if the faces of their future husbands would appear. But scientists say the imperfections in the mirror trick our brain's facial recognition system, making people falsely believe they're seeing someone else. So let's put this to the test to see if anything unexplained appears to me as I stare at my own reflection in this mirror. Are you kidding me? What? I literally had a wide shot the whole time, went to zoom in on your face and it blipped. Can you do that again? Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Whoa. Is that you? Can you knock that over? Looks like you're having fun with it. Just like any good toy, we'll see if it bounces. A little harder. Push it. Just give it a kick.
little harder. Push it. A little harder. Push it. Where'd you go? Can you speak to us some more? Did a car just go by? No. I thought I saw a shadow go behind me. No cars. Who in the basement is scratching people, inviting people? If all you want is attention, here we are. Weird, though, that when I told it to knock it over, that it, like, gave one of the strongest alarms that I've probably ever seen the millimeter do. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's, it, it was like, as if someone was desperately trying to push it over, like, getting, like, just grabbing a hold of it. Right. And then maybe expended all of its energy and nothing else has happened. Yeah. Do you want to try and sit here? Sure. All right. <clears throat> Dave is going to open himself up to you. Can you show yourself to him? If you can see me, please go over here to this light and try and touch it like you were doing before. Caught that. It's out of focus, but I caught it. Thank you. Is there something with the mirror? That helps you get into our world? Am I moving? No. Holy crap. Why? I'm looking at my... I'm not joking. My head is moving. In the mirror. You're sitting still. Who is that that Dave is seeing? Apparently you heard me before. Can you please try and close the closet door? The closet door is closed. Oh. That was weird. Why? I don't know. It just looked like it was open to me. I really don't know what I'm doing here, but this is, like, I've never done this before. But it's making me very nervous. What about it is making you nervous? I don't know. Can you touch the light again? Like you have been doing? There you go, you're doing it. So I'm going to be listening to the spirit box through the headphones and Dave's going to be asking the questions and the whole point of this method is to try and rule out pareidolia because I'm not going to know what he's asking and if any of my answers that I call out are correlating or are related to the questions that he asked, it could be someone answering us through the device. It's also important to point out that we're going to be recording the spirit box and playing it for you when I hear a response. That way you can listen right along with me, be immersed in the experience and be a part of this Estes method as well, which the other thing I forgot upstairs is the blindfold. So let me go get that. Rolling. We are sweeping. While performing the Estes method spirit box session in the basement, the thermal imaging camera is rolling in Daisy's room on the first floor. Because it's believed paranormal activity can cause temperature anomalies, a camera that sees in temperature is the perfect tool to capture this type of phenomena. I also wanted to point out, the headphones I'm using are new, because our older ones were damaged, 
and you'll see in this session, the audio quality of these headphones makes it nearly impossible for me to understand most of the responses coming through. This just reinforces our motivation to record the spirit box audio. Because even if I can't hear the responses in the moment, we can hear them now. Also, my apologies in advance for how angry you're about to see me get at these headphones. Okay. All right, so we are starting the Estes session here at the Beale Mansion. I, I thought I heard Ryan look, and then I heard look again. Oh, wow. Okay, we're already hearing. He's already hearing. Man's school. voice, all the same voice. Okay, I'm going to be asking a series of questions. My name is Dave, and this down here at the end of the hall is Ryan. Can you tell us what your name is? Ryan has a radio in his hand that you can use to communicate with us as I ask you questions. Can you please tell Ryan what your name is? We heard that there is an entity here, a spirit here, who likes to bite people and scratch people. Are you here? How come you bite people? Do you feel like you need to bite people to get their attention? Is that why you do that? Are you one of the children who stayed here? We heard that there were children who were unwanted by their parents and were left here. Stop. Stop. Man's it. voice. Stop what? Here. Can you please tell me your name? I want to know it. I don't want anybody here to be afraid. That was weird. It was like a full sentence. Did somebody hurt you while you were here? You, li you liar? I'm not lying. Why would you say I'm lying? I'm just trying to help you. Don't you want somebody to listen to you? Listen to what you have to say? No. Does that upset you? Everything that I'm hearing is very distant. If you are speaking to me, try and take a step closer so I can hear you. Please I, can, get... I can't understand anything you guys are saying. Please get closer to Ryan down there. He's at the end of the hall. Mm. Sounded like a woman's voice there. Still couldn't understand what it said. Daisy, are you here? Please answer Ryan down there. He has a radio. He can hear you. God, these headphones are awful. Why? I can't understand a damn thing that anyone is saying. It's so, like, bassy and thumpy. 
You can change it. Can you? Yeah, here, I'll do it. I thought the reason I couldn't hear any of the voices was because none of them were coming through clearly, but I'm now realizing it's the headphones that I'm using that are making them inaudible. Because we have been getting some relevant responses. I just can't hear them. Literally, it's been like useless. Dave shows me how to equalize the audio coming through the headphones, but as you're about to see, it doesn't help. See this button right here? Yeah. It's an equalizer button. Just keep, it's the second one up. Keep pressing it until it sounds better. Okay. And the longer we continue, the more frustrated I become. Ryan's listening again. We were having some trouble hearing you, so. David? That's me. I'm David. Who is that down there? Do you remember his name? Dave? Yes, that's me. If you can actually hear me, can you tell Ryan how many fingers that I'm holding up? Ooh, that was a child's voice. That was weird. How many fingers? Dave. That's me. We heard that there is an entity or a spirit or a person down here who likes to bite people. Is that true? What are you doing here? Why are you down here? Something like that? There's a new owner of the house. Somebody bought it and they invited us to come in here and talk to you. So we're just here to say hello. Is that okay? If it's not, you can tell Ryan he's right down there. Man's voice couldn't make it out. Do you know that you're no longer living? What are you doing? How does it work when we die? Do we get to roam around the earth or is there nothing after death? Why are you still here and able to hear us? These last two voices fascinate us. Dave's question of, Do we get to roam around the earth or? was answered with two responses. It's vague, but are they telling us there's some truth to the idea of spirit, a consciousness that lives on after death? We didn't have the opportunity to find out because after 32 minutes of frustration, I finally hit my breaking point. How be Was that you? Yes, I can't f***ing hear anything through these. <laughs> it's f***ing pissing me off. We already have a hard enough time with it being just the two of us trying to do all of the things that we do and juggle all the things that we do to make the videos and investigate. And when technical difficulties pop up, it just gets me so angry and so mad because it's like we don't have time for it. Right. We, ne we don't have time for any sort of hiccup at all. Maybe, maybe something did come through and you just couldn't hear it. Maybe. I hope, if that's the case. God, that got me so raging f pissed. I can tell. And ending. Despite my anger in the moment, there's relief in the safety net that's formed when we record the Spirit Box audio during these Estes sessions. If we relied fully on my ears to tell Dave what the voices were saying, this whole session would have been a waste of time and we never would have known that someone was trying to answer our questions. Everything that I'm hearing is very distant. If you are speaking to me, try and take a step closer so I can hear you. As frustrated as I am in this moment, our formula worked and their voices were heard eventually. As for these headphones, they're going in a dumpster, so. 
All's well that ends well. All right, so we are getting started here with the sweep. We had an unsuccessful Estes session downstairs, or less than successful, we'll say. So we're gonna do an SLS sweep here and see what happens. If anybody would like their picture taken, can you go stand on the stairs right here in front of me? Can you try touching that bright red light right there? Right at the bottom of the stairs, please. Could you do that for me? Daisy, we put a music box in your room there. Can you try and make that go off? Sweep back towards the living room here. Watch this. That one does it. That one does it. We're gonna go over here. Can you try and do that? Can you try and touch that? With your hand? What is that? It's just a noise maker. It lets us know you're here. It won't hurt you. You want to try it? Anybody? Are there any children here that would like to let us know that they're here? Or maybe the wolf family? Mr. Wolf, which bedroom did you pass away in? Can you tell us? Are you out here in the hallway? I'm trying to take your picture. Can you show yourself for me? Can you let us know you can hear us by touching the noisemakers downstairs like you did earlier? <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I don't know. You know what I do know though? There is the possibility that even though we have had a very, very slow night, that we captured evidence that we don't know about. There's still a lot of stuff to review. We have audio to review, we have abandonment to review, and we have that Estes method to review because who knows what the recorder that was recording the spirit box picked up when I couldn't hear what the voices were saying through those piece of crap headphones. Yeah. But we want to thank you guys for watching. If you made it all the way to the end of the video here, we want to thank you. You're a real trooper and you're a true part of the Paranormal Quest family. Make sure that you hit that like button and share this video with your friends and family. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We have a lot of new videos coming up. We are going to have an entire series of our adventures in Australia. And we want to bring you guys along for the ride on our Paranormal Quest. And also, don't forget, if you want special perks, as well as to help support our quest additionally, you can join our uh, Patreon or become a member of the channel. And besides that, everyone, we'll be back again next week with another brand new episode, our Halloween special. We hope you're ready because this location is one of the biggest and most anticipated locations that we've had to investigate in a long time. We hope you guys are ready. We certainly are. Stay safe, everyone. Thank you for all your support, and we'll see you next time. Go get some abandonment merch. It's brand new. Abandonment merch. Later. <laughs>